Here are some people who didn't exactly think through their situation. Wait until you hear about why this monkey started chasing this girl. Number 12, Darwin Award. YouTuber Jay Swingler seriously feared for his life after a prank didn't go the way that he and his friends had planned for a video. He should feel extremely lucky because he could have easily not made it if things happened just a little differently. His friends placed a plastic bag over his head, held a tube to his mouth to breathe, and then stuck his head into a microwave. They then filled the microwave with plaster. Apparently, they were never planning to let the polyphila completely set and intended to slide his head out of the microwave. But they let too much time pass, and when Jay stood up, he realized he couldn't breathe. They did manage to make a hole for him so he wouldn't suffocate. His friend spent over an hour trying to get him out, but finally gave up and called the professionals. Five firefighters spent an hour breaking apart the microwave and plaster from his head, and they obviously weren't happy about it since they tweeted about the incident saying, quote, we're seriously unimpressed. If you're enjoying this video, do us a favor and hit that thumbs up down there. Number 11, Bachelor Decisions. Aaron Hughes had been partying for 37 straight hours in Nevada when he made a decision that could have easily been the worst in his life. He decided to swim across the Hoover Dam. Spoiler alert, he made it and actually became the first person to make it across the reservoir alive. There was one very simple reason why he was the first person to make it across. Aaron was in the Vegas area for a bachelor party, so that explains the staying up for 37 hours and then jumping into the reservoir. Did anyone try to stop him? Was anyone in the group coherent? He said the swim took around 30 minutes, but admitted that he knew he was in trouble halfway across because he got really tired but there was no turning back for him. He knew he had to make it to the other side as he could feel the water pulling him towards the dam. After making it across the water, he was then arrested and fined by local police for $330. Officials theorized that the only way he survived was because nine of the dam's 10 turbines were turned off at the time. Any other time, he most likely would not have made it. Number 10, Russian Roulette. Ah, Mother Russia, where anything insane is caught on video. Here's a woman who tried to thaw a frozen gas pump with a lighter. Well, thank goodness there was footage of this. Obviously, you guys know what happened. She accidentally set her car on fire. This happened in the city of Surgut, located roughly 18 miles northeast of Moscow. Using a cigarette lighter, the woman was trying to thaw something out. Whatever it was, it was just a dumb move because, of course, the pump caught on fire. The funniest part was she actually tried to blow out the fire, as if that would work. Then she completely panicked and took the gas pump out of the car, probably the worst move because that just caused the fire to grow bigger. Gas still came out of the pump. So yeah, there are a lot of things that could go wrong using a lighter at a gas station, no matter how cold it is in Russia. Number nine, emotional support animal. If you decide to bring a crocodile on a plane, just be prepared for anything to happen. A small airliner crashed into a house after a crocodile smuggled onto the aircraft escaped and started a panic. The plane came down despite not showing any apparent mechanical problems to the control tower during a domestic flight in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The crash was caused by the crocodile escaping and causing a stampede in the cabin that completely threw the airplane off balance. The only survivor told the crazy story to investigators. One of the passengers had hidden the animal, which he had planned to sell, in a big sports bag. The crocodile somehow escaped as the plane began its descent. The flight attendant saw the crocodile and panicked, and everyone else did too. The pilots did their best to control the airplane, but ended up crashing the plane. Amazingly, the crocodile survived the crash too. Enjoying our videos? Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you won't miss out on new video releases. Number 8. Ghost Riding 22-year-old Jasmine Lacey was driving a stolen Hyundai Sonata down a hill through San Bernardino. She then uh, casually stepped out of the car and left the door open while the engine was still running and the car still moving. This is what millennials would call Ghost Ride the Whip. Ah, uh, memories from the mid-2000s. Lacey then kept calmly walking towards the center median, basically not paying attention to anything. So, what do you think happened? Of course, the car hit something. It crossed the road and hit two cars in oncoming traffic before crashing into a tree. So, was she actually just trying to ghost ride the whip? Or did she just have no clue what was going on? Lacey was arrested on suspicion of driving under the influence, but she was later released without getting charged because of insufficient evidence. This was even after officers said she was incoherent. Number seven, clean insides. 
Are people still doing the Tide Pod Challenge? Because of one person filming themselves eating a Tide Pod that went viral, poison control centers had to deal with a spike in calls in 2018. Numerous people have been hospitalized after doing this dangerous social media challenge. Does someone really need a reason to understand why they're not supposed to eat a Tide Pod? Why is it so dangerous? Well, the liquid detergent in the pods is not at the same concentration as regular liquid detergent, as a higher concentration since it's designed to be a small pod. Poison control centers have handled over 50,000 calls about Tide Pods and other imitation products over the past five years. The vast majority are accidents involving kids younger than five years old. However, 13 to 19 year olds are responsible for more than 130 intentional exposures since 2016. Number six, risk assessment class. When you pull a stunt like Nick Nadev, the least you should expect is to be banned. Nick leapt off the 11th floor balcony of a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Of course, he did it on a dare and his boys were recording him. To be honest, that's pretty crazy because it was a dive of more than 100 feet. The video his friends took didn't show Nick's impact, but he did survive to post it to his Instagram. His uh, little stunt got him immediately kicked off from that Royal Caribbean cruise and they gave him a lifetime ban. What's more, they even kicked all his friends off too. At the time, the cruise ship was docked in Nassau in the Bahamas. Royal Caribbean security officials contacted the local authorities immediately to kick them off the ship. They were forced to make it back home on their own from the Bahamas afterwards. Nick later confessed that his neck and back hurt after the jump and that he could, quote, barely walk for three days. Also, he complained about getting kicked off. Well, what did he expect? Jumping 250 feet or more into the water is fatal 95 to 98% of the time. 150 feet equates roughly to a 15-story building. Jumping off the 11th floor of a cruise ship is definitely dangerous and stupid. Number five, wacky tobacco. South Wales police discovered a huge factory growing, let's call it uh, wacky tobacco, right next door. The plants were found in a factory unit less than 100 feet away from the South Wales police headquarters. Neighbors were shocked at how the operation had been so close to police H headquarters without anyone having a clue. Police speculated that it might have been going on for years without anyone noticing. But the thing is, if it's right next door, police are going to start wondering what's going on one day. For a long time, police thought it was just another empty unit. No one was seen coming and going, but that apparently wasn't unusual because other building units weren't used for storage. But police eventually grew suspicious because of how long they did not see anyone going to the unit. So when police finally investigated, they found a bunch of that green stuff that's very valuable. They ended up arresting three people associated with the building. What did those guys expect? Number four, do not pass go, do not collect $200. A guy showed up to a police station asking for help because he was being chased. Normally, this would go the way you think it would go. The guy would be protected from whoever was chasing him, and the guy would go home. However, the man who showed up asking for help was a wanted criminal. The man knocked on the door of the police station to tell officers he was being chased and asked for assistance. However, he was arrested on the spot once police discovered he had outstanding warrants for five different charges. He drove himself to the police station in a stolen car, and he also did it while having a suspended license, so they added more charges on. Officers at the station just could not believe it when they realized that a wanted criminal came to them asking for help. What did the guy expect? Show up and not get locked up? Number three, find my burglar. Don't most people know that Apple has that whole find my device app? Obviously, these three guys did not know that important piece of information when they broke into a car and stole an iPad, among other expensive electronic items. They got in trouble after they were tracked down by police using the tracking app installed on the iPad. The owner had called police and reported that electronics worth thousands of dollars were stolen from his car. But he also added that the Find My iPhone app was installed and working on his iPad. The burglars had no idea the police officers were literally tracking their every move. After a high-speed chase, the police decided to simply just wait for them to park. Police snuck up on them and the guys were arrested the minute they stepped out of their car. Number two, no flex zone. Karima Nabi from Birmingham was visiting the Trenton Monkey Forest Park with her sister when she approached a monkey for a photo. How close is too close to get to a monkey? As Karima quickly found out, it's really better to keep your distance. 
A series of shots of her encounter with the monkey went viral on Twitter because of her experience trying to get one picture with a monkey. As you can tell, the monkey was not thrilled about her trying to get close. Karima said the monkey lunged towards her and she ran for about 10 seconds before the monkey gave up on the chase. The park where the incident happened does warn all of its visitors to not get too close to them. Monkeys can easily feel threatened and once they do, this is what happens. Number one, and the bridge goes up. Wanda McGowan was doing what she thought was a normal thing, which was crossing a bridge. However, it wasn't just any bridge. It was a railroad bridge, one that raised up to allow boats to get through. Wanda quickly found herself dangling 22 feet up in the air. She was obviously petrified to find herself there. One slip and things would not have gone well for her. McGowan, who's legally blind, didn't see the no trespassing signs on the bridge. She walked across, the bridge went up. A bridge going up without warning is a very good reason reason why pedestrians are not allowed to be on it. Plenty of people gathered to watch what was going on and of course take pictures. Firefighters got her down just using a 24-foot ladder. Watch this next video to find out all the crazy things a Florida man does.